Greetings fellow Earthlings and welcome to this tiny garage! We found out in episode 15 that the reason the engine in this car died was simply down to $50 worth of Variocam chain guide plastic that had worn to the point of destruction, causing the cam timing to go out. Now at that time, the idea of re-timing the cams on this engine was a foreign concept that I presume would make much more sense once I knew what cams were. Well, that day is here. It is time to time the cams. Well, almost time to time the cams. The IMS tensioner has to go in. This is it. I got this O-ring and this aluminum crush washer from the gasket kit we got in episode 24. They go on there. Now it is spring loaded like that, but that hole takes pressurized oil from the engine. So what I'm gonna do is fill it up there. And this apparently is a way to get around using that expensive special Porsche tool. You just fill it up with oil and that really did change the feel of it. It was much more difficult to press down. And then you just attach it right before you start assembling everything. And apparently that is good. Cylinder head gasket. If your head gasket is gone, this is what needs replacing. It's in the join between the heads and the main engine part. Kind of separates the oil and the water from each other. This area really just cleaning it up very well. Here are the head gaskets that I got from Pelican Parts. They do have a label on them telling you which head they are for. Comparing them, they are very similar, but there's a slight difference in the size of the holes for the coolant, I think. Uh, it does say what bank they're for. That's cylinders four to six for bank two there. It also has which way is top and the part number on it. Now that's pretty simple. There is no sealant or anything. You just put the gasket on. I'm taking the primary chain sprocket off to make it easier with the help of my daughter to get the head on, pulling that timing chain through its little hole there. And that really was all there was to that, using the rubber hammer just because it looks cool, and then tying off that chain so it stays. Hold on, what's the dog doing? Oh yeah, subscribe now. Delta says thank you. All right then, now we need to put the cylinder head bolts in. These are all new. You can't reuse them because they stretch. I'm using what's left of that ARP lube for whatever it's worth. Then on the side of the cylinder head, there are these H5 bolts. And then there's one of them right in the timing chain area. Those are all torqued to 13 Newton meters. On bank one only, we have this oil baffle. So we wanna make sure we don't forget that little feller. That is bolted in with one of those regular old 10 mils. And shockingly, it goes to 10 Newton meters. We need new spark plugs. I got carried away ordering Porsche flux capacitors and such and forgot about just good old fashioned spark plugs. I got these at the local store. They are the best ones they had. NGK Iridiums with a single tiny electrode. They are 16 millimeter, which is pretty common. And I'm using a spark plug socket to install them, which has some rubber inside to hold the spark plug. They are 30 Newton meters plus three Newton meters and they're done. The cylinder head bolts need to be torqued in a particular sequence. We're using a T55 Torx for this. We start off by torquing them all to 30 Newton meters. Let's take a look at that torquing sequence because this is going to be useful in general. What I've been told by you helpful folks is you should torque from the center out. And so the manual is saying you want to do an X in the middle there, like go diagonal from side to side, then another bigger X, and then working out to the end, another bigger X. Then if you're undoing, do the opposite of that. So the next step is we're loosening. So I'm going through those steps backwards and just backing all the bolts off. Then we tighten them all up to 20 Newton meters again in that same order. Then step four is turning the bolts an additional 60 degrees. And I love this digital torque wrench for that. It makes that job very easy. Finishing up with step five, 
turning those bolts another 60 degrees, and that's it. Now that whole process was way more stressful when I was reading about it, and really not that bad to do in practice. I would like if you would hit the like button. Okay, the valve lifter housing or valve lifter cage, tap it cage, pick a name. This goes in with these 15 H5 bolts and then they are all torqued up to 10 Newton meters. Now there is no particular pattern specified, but I am kind of doing a diamond pattern out from the center in a sequence inspired by the cylinder heads. And thank you to subscriber Jordan Y for this egg box trick. Our hydraulic lifters are still perfectly organized. With our lifter housing installed, we can install our hydraulic lifters. They are supposed to go back into the same hole they came out of, which I am doing. A little bit of graphogen to lube their way in. Went a little over the top with this particular demonstration one, but uh, you get the gist. Kind of covering all the sides and the part that gets touched by the cam. These Bentley manuals certainly are impressive tomes, but I know now that if you want to work on the inside of one of these engines, the Bentley manual really is not going to help you very much. And so I would like to thank again Lee Jenkins at Hartec in England. Uh, Lee is the director of Porsche Engine Wizardry at Hartec in Bolton in the UK. And I know them from their work rebuilding and redesigning the M96 engines for this Porsche 996 Carrera. But they really do a lot more than that. And they even have a research and development department that's cleverly disguised as a competitive racing team. And we actually have some news from Hartec later on in this episode. But for now, I would really like to thank Lee uh, for sharing with the group and helping us all uh, keep these cars on the road. Bario cam set up. So from here on in, the advice I got from Lee Jenkins really is pivotal on even being able to contemplate pulling this off. So let's start with that Vario cam there with those little plastic pads. We discussed that in episode 20, the Vario cam extravaganza. And we bought those plastic pads and the chain in episode 24 from Pelican Parts. It's a pretty tight fit, but we got it to go there. Now on bank one, that notch on the intake cam is at the top. And then we need to count across eight links on that chain. And then we need to make sure that those little dots on the cams line up with those dots we made on the chain. Okay, to start the timing process, we need to turn the engine to U6. There's U6. Currently, the engine is on OT, which is top dead center in English. Why is it OT? Well, according to Google Translate, at least, top dead center in German is Überer Todpunkt, which I think explains the OT for top dead center on these cars. Intake and exhaust cam installation. Now that we have them put together, it's time to put them on top of the lifters. This one happens to be from bank two. They are very, very similar. The process is extremely similar. You can tell that this is bank two because that top cam pad has the holes in it on the bank one that one's in the bottom and then also the cap of the vario cam solenoid is gray on bank two now that our cams are in there we're going to take the chain and just lay it across the end of the exhaust cam and putting some graphogen on all of the different cam lobes and then just putting the cam caps in place there's one on the end of the exhaust cam that i'm putting on there and then also one on the end of the intake cam then a bunch of H5s, two H5s in each of the caps, and then three longer H5s that go into the Vario cam itself. With the cams loosely in place, it's time to brace the cams with Porsche Special Tool 9611. Couple of hardware store 10 mils holding that in place. Now we can torque all of those down. Those are H5 Allens, and they're all gonna go to 14 Newton meters. And then Porsche Special Tool 9632 that we use to compress the Vario cam can come out at this stage. That kitchen paper is to stop that bolt from disappearing inside the engine. Now Porsche Special Tool 9612 is going to get attached onto the end and this is what really checks the timing. This came in that toolkit that we got in episode 14. 
and we're tightening that up onto the end of the exhaust cam and the brace you're not really tightening that down, you're using it to get the height right so that the tool can slot in. There it just did into the end of the exhaust cam. And then we're tightening that into place. That's the sword bolt I was just playing with there. And then we're going to use a 24 mil to lift that tool up. And then we're going to push it into position so it's right next to the intake cam. And then we're pulling it back down until it lightly touches the cylinder head there, which it is. The primary chain sprocket is the one place where bank 1 and bank 2 are different. For bank 1, put it in so that the holes are on the left hand side and for bank 2, put it in in such a fashion that the holes are kind of on the right. Now whichever bank you're working on, it's time to put the chain tensioner in. This is what it looks like on bank 1. They're very similar but ever so slightly different. That is the chain rail that it's tensioning. And then here on bank two, we do need to take that mount off. And we're gonna do that same oil trick with the tensioners, pump them up a little bit and then install them. And they are all 32 millimeters and tightened to 80 Newton meters. Quite a lot of Newton meters. Now we're gonna rotate the engine from U6 to OT, or top dead center just a very small movement and you don't want to go past. Now when you look back at the primary chain sprocket, whichever bank you're on, is going to be more or less kind of in the middle and wherever it is is good. Bolt that in place to 14 Newton meters. And then you can see there on bank two how that notch on the intake cam is facing down. Now you go back and check your sword bolt and it's still in that same kind of manner. It's just snugly touching the cylinder head. Next, we're gonna loosen up that tool so that we can rotate the engine freely. Now I'm marking top dead center there and we're gonna rotate the engine two complete turns, clockwise of course, that's the direction this engine wants to go in. And then if we check the timing and look at the timing chain, you can see how there's half links. We can't see the whole link, so we're gonna call them half links. And there's eight of them. And that's good, they line up with our marks on the cams and everything. Now we're gonna rotate the engine another two turns back to top dead center. Now that puts us back to where we were and we should have eight complete chain sections to see. And we do, so that's good. And that tool can come off and the brace can come off. Each of the banks has a chain guide bolt to install in the side at this point. Now is a good time to do it once you've got all of the chain sprocket in place. Here's what it looks like on bank two. Those are all the same. They have that one O-ring that came in our O-ring kit and we're tightening those to 10 Newton meters. Graphogen injection. Okay, this is not official, everybody. I just made this up. I had this syringe lying around from that clutch demonstration in episode 10. So I'm using that to get more graphogen assembly lube into inaccessible places. Hit the notification bell. It's up there. Yes, please. We talked earlier about Lee Jenkins at Hartec and their research and development department. Well, it turns out they have a development. Barry Hart, who is the heart of Hartec, if you will, has designed an eco power engine that uses variable compression technology to allow most internal combustion engines to develop more power, more torque, and more economy. Now, this is where you guys come in. Hartec are looking for a partner to help them bring that technology to the world market. Now, if you think that person is you, seriously, contact them down below. That's most of the tricky bits done. So now it's just time to put the cylinder head cover back on whichever bank you're working on. Here is the Loctite sealant job that I did. I would say that the one piece I got right is that piece there. It wants to be very thin and on the outside of the middle. Otherwise it runs the risk of squashing inside and blocking up some of the oil passageways like these little ones right here. Ask me how I know. I redid bank one for that very reason. 
Then we just thread the Vario Cam cable through the cylinder head cover. And of course some rubber hammer action, so we look super professional. This Vario Cam cap came in that gasket kit we got in episode 24. A couple of 10 mils on there. For the cylinder head cover, there is also a torque sequence, and you're looking at it here. That's number one of 23. And in general, you can see it's kind of doing a square out from the center, and then a bigger square out from that, so it kind of makes sense. Then next, moving out to the very edge for another big square. And from here, kind of just going around the edge, there's a little bit of jumping around. The torquing sequence here is similar to that of the cylinder heads in the sense that you start in the center and work your way out. Spark plug tubes. Here we are. These are the spark plug tubes that came with the car. They are a little bit grotty. And so all I did was stuck them in the kitchen sink, gave them a wash up. And then new gaskets, again, from the parts we got in episode 24. They were in that same gasket kit. And that's it. Now we did take the muffler mounts off for all the cleaning, etc. And so the muffler mount needs to go back on. This is a very simple thing. We've got three of these 13 mils. The center one is slightly longer than the outside ones. And I don't know what the torque is supposed to be on those, so I put them on to 20 Newton meters. I need to tape some orifices. Now that the engine is put back together for hopefully the last time, it would be bad if we dropped anything into these holes. And so I'm taping everything up to be on the safe side. Also, one of the spark plug tubes on bank two was broken. And so I'm gonna tape up that hole until I get a new one from the Porsche dealer. So that's it. Complete that sequence for bank one, then turn the crank back to U6. Do that exact same sequence for bank two with those three differences to watch out for. And you're done. Your cams and your engine are in time. With our cams all timed and our cylinder heads put back together, that means we have a complete long block engine now. And that's another major headache behind us. We have the new IMS, the direct oil feed IMS from Tune RS Motorsports. So that takes care of that issue. And also we did get the pistons back together and into bank two using those fancy uh, Porsche tools. And so looking ahead, all we have to do is put all the other bits and pieces back on the engine, stick it back in the car. Oh yeah, put the transmission on, stick it back in the car and we're good. Should be easy, right? Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time. I'd like to say a big thank you to Kevin Kurzminski and Edward Miglior. Hello. Uh, two new members, thank you very much for joining the garage and thank you to all of the members for your generous support in helping to get this beautiful car back on the road. Thank you everybody. Thank you.